you know, you said something about your dad being like he either loved him or, you know, the opposite, but the thing about him and, and the way that he affected kids' lives. So I've always said, and the reason why I got into camping personally was because I thought my camp director, and I went to an all boys camp in Maine, was the second most influential male figure in my life growing up. So my guess, Matthew, is Bill Mays was that to many boys. He was. And you got to also realize a lot of things were changing, you know. When, when he bought it in the late 60s and through the 70s, all the way through the 80s, you know, families were changing, workplace was changing, divorce rate was through the roof. These parents would drop some of these kids off to my dad and expect him to work some miracle on them. Mm. You know, it was a structured, disciplined place. So you were either going to get it or you weren't. But it was, um, <laughs> yeah, I think he was. I think he became a father figure to a lot of those families and especially the ones of those in, in the seventies when the divorce rate just really was starting to skyrocket. Mm. There were young boys and this was an all boys camp. This was not a co-ed camp. It was a boys camp. Yep. A, a rough and tumble boys camp. And I think so, you know, you couldn't even run a camp like that. Now today I'll throw that in there. There was no way you could even, you can find someone to ensure the program we were doing, you know, but when we were kids, I'm 58 years old. So when I was a kid, that's what we did. You know, that, that was the kind of activities that lit us up. And you can, it, it was incredibly fun. But you, you'd be hard pressed to do it today, which is part of the reason my dad got out of it. But to answer your question, yes, he was probably a father figure and a strong male presence to a lot of those kids. And even the ones that didn't like him. And then I could say, you, you might not have liked him and you loved him, but you won't forget him. Was the program um, equally distributed for the sports and the arts, or was it more of a sports camp? What was the program kind of like? It was more of the sports. And then we had a mandatory physical fitness and coordination class that you had to take with your morning classes five days a week. And my dad started that because he just thought it was that necessary to, to young boys to be physically fit. And as he started in school, started watching the Presidential Council of Fitness let, uh, scores drop and drop and drop and drop every year he kind of tuned into it even more look we had some parents sending their kids to this camp for no other reason than that you know right. because it was that important but there was a, a, a there was an art side of it too that we had you know with with the with the craft shop that my mom ran but on top of that man you also had riflery ski archery in an unbelievable nature program. Now we had about 200 acres there on that place. And my dad was an animal freak. It was a farm in the off season. We had every kind of animal you could think about. Chickens, turkeys, goats, sheep, cows. Mm. I mean, everything, you know, and that, and we kind of took care of them in the off season. So there was also this kind of, uh, you know, na bio friendly educational nature program going on at the, farm program at the, at the same time all this was going on and every kid had to be tapped into that for an all-night capture of the flag you didn't have to take that class but you know it was it was very educational you know all right, right. All so, the tree species and all the animals and fish traps and you know i ran i was an all-american high school basketball player and played in college and uh i turned out a pro career in europe to do the music thing but I ran that nature program one year rather than coach basketball for my dad up there. And it was the most fun I ever had because I could not believe how those kids knew absolutely nothing about so much of st the stuff that's just right there at their fingertips in their backyard. And we would, I would, you know, I'd take them on these trips and I'd teach them about the trees and the bark and reading that and moss on the north side and show them how to run a fish trap or even build one and why it works. Snakes, hey, which ones are poisonous? Which ones are not? Hey, there's a couple of quick, quick ways to learn if you want to get close enough to one. You know, <laughs> just everything. Poison ivy, we got three different kinds. I mean, just all this stuff is so valuable for these. I got more out of that teaching these kids than I did how to do a crossover or a back step or a jump shot or all that. You know, that was kind of a, a small group of boys that were really focused on sports like that. Take a moment to shine.